welcome to the DL, the podcast show that talks about everything to do with truck repair and diagnostics for the heavy truck and construction industry. I am your host, Tyler Robertson, CEO and founder of Diesel Laptops. Welcome everyone to a new episode of the DL. I am your host, Tyler Robertson, the CEO and founder of Diesel Laptops. And today I have with me another CEO and founder of a company you may have heard of. You may have seen him on Good Morning America. You may have seen him on Shark Tank. You may have seen his product in the front of Time Magazine. So Tom Burden, well, from Gripmat, welcome to the show, sir. Yeah, thank you so, so much for having me. Um, I, love, I love listening to your guys' podcast. I love what you're saying on like the DL. Um, keep it on the DL is a good slang term you guys could use. Yeah. Awesome. But yeah. So, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. It's great to have you here and you're not here, right? You're, you're not here at all in the continental U S. So why don't you tell everyone kind of where, where are you right now? Yeah. So I, uh, was fortunate enough to make it out to Hawaii before, um, you know, everything shut down. So I've been out here for over two months now and it's been a huge blessing of, of getting like basically amazing trip to to hawaii for like 80 to 90 percent off <laughs> so uh yeah i've been we we've been doing we've had we've been having like an, an awesome house here we got five of us here everyone's very entrepreneurial minded and been having like a lot of like good energy and um getting excited for each other for for our wins so yeah it's been amazing so is it some of your team that's there with you? Or are you there by yourself and they're back here? Or how did you guys, how, how did it come to be the Hawaii thing with the whole outbreak and everything? What, what happened there? How did that work out? Yeah, so, so I, um, so long story short, I read this book and the last chapter says, do something crazy that you normally wouldn't do. Um, and they're like, do it for 24 hours. If you got to call off work, whatever you got to do, do it. Um, books called Illusion of Money by Kyle Cease. And um, I had like a busy weekend and I was like, I don't have time to do this. And COVID hit, my entire weekend was wiped clean, nothing to do, and I still didn't do it. And then um, I, was, I was like out to dinner with my family and I said to my mom, I'm like, I think I'm gonna go to Hawaii. And then I got a text message from a buddy who, um, is in the National Guard and he goes, he goes, all of Ohio is going to shut down in 48 to 72 hours. And I just texted the team, the grip mat team. I was like, who wants to go to Hawaii? And um, everyone was like, I don't think we should travel right now. And then um, Alex, our videographer, was the only one that was like, yeah, let's go. So I call Alex. This is like 11 o'clock at night. I call Alex. I'm like, hey, if we leave, we got to leave now. Like the National Guard is going to shut down the state. Um, like we got to leave on the next plane plane out. So this is 11 o'clock at night. We get done talking at one in the morning and um, we are leaving for the airport at six in the morning. So like five hours later, it was like, pack all your stuff, we're leaving. And I'm usually like an early bird. So I'm like trying to go to bed around like nine o'clock and it's like 11, no, well, it's like getting very late and my, my roommate's typically up later and uh, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm packing. He's <laughs> like, oh, you got to, he's like, your trade show didn't get canceled. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to Hawaii. I'm not going to a trade show. <laughs> and, uh, and then I had a layover in Denver, Colorado. And I texted my buddy who lives in Boulder, Marshall. And I was like, hey, we have a plane. We're going to Kauai right now. Can you um, make our plane that's leaving in two hours? And he's like, I can't make the plane in two hours, but I'll see you there in the morning. So he just got on the next plane the, or the plane th the following morning out. And so it was us three. And then um, through a friend of a friend met Heather, who's she lives here on the island. She's like a nutritionist. So she's like getting us all in shape. And then um, we've got Michael here, who his parents live on the island. And um, so he, he actually came he's actually like still in quarantine so he's like locked in his room right now um but he uh like his dad like had to talk he like had to talk to the chief of police and had to like you know give like a real like real reasons why he's here and why he's coming 
So um, it's been pretty wild. I mean, like the house that we're in right now is normally twenty five thousand dollars a month, and we got it for thirty five hundred dollars. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I like the one way plane tickets we got out here were, were one hundred eighty eight dollars. So um, <laughs> it's been pretty wild. Well, it's looking like a great thing that you did because oh, Hawaii is obviously an island. And I just saw an article, I think like two days ago, where someone got arrested because they they're supposed to do a 14 day quarantine when they show up on Hawaii. So the guy got there, decided not to do that and decided to go around, take a bunch of pictures and put them on Instagram or whatever. Um, so it's looking like a you guys have it. You were just telling me earlier, there hasn't been a case there in quite a while. And yeah. what's it like there? Is it, is it locked down? Is everyone, you know, wearing masks and that whole thing? Or is it pretty much a wide open thing right now? So um, th there is like a lot of things that are locked down there. Like everyone is wearing masks when they go anywhere in public. I mean, if you're in, if you're going into like a store, you have to wear a mask. Um, if you're just out like exercising, you don't really need to wear a mask. Um, the beaches were shut down for a while. Those are like slowly starting to get opened back up in like different ways. Like people can go surfing, but um, for a while they were against like sunbathing. But um, usually, so we're on the island of Kauai, which Kauai is more of like the, the rural, rural island, more like the outdoorsy, um, mm. kind of like the country version where like Oahu, Oahu would be more of like the city style. And um, yeah, Kauai is more of the country, country style. So normally the population here is about 60,000 um, citizens and then about 30 to 40,000 tourists. And now there's like three, maybe 3,000 tourists. So it's pretty like empty. Um, so the thing is, I don't really know what Kauai is normally like. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know, like, like the be beaches are like, to me, like pretty empty. Like, Having 20 people at the beach is, is, is like full, but in reality, like normally it's like 200 people is normal. So, uh, yeah, it's been pretty wild, but, um, you know, we're still able to like really enjoy the island, which has been fantastic. Um, awesome. it's been, it's been really cool. Awesome. So let's give everyone, if they're not familiar with grip mat, let's just give them a, a quick overview. I know you've been all over the place. I see you all over the place, TV, social media, the internet everywhere. But just kind of explain to everyone what your product is and where the idea came from and kind of, I mean, Kickstarter all the way up through kind of kind of what you went through there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I was an F-16 mechanic in the Air Force, tired my tool sliding off the aircraft. And, um, you know, when you're working on top of a fighter jet, very, a lot of curved surface, um, very slick surface. And, you know, there's not really good solution to where you should set your tools. So you're constantly running up and down the ladder every time you need to set something down. So at the same time, I was going to college for mechanical engineering and um, I ended up, you know, I, I was just started, I wanted to solve this problem. And uh, in my mom's car, I noticed she had a non-slip mat on her dashboard to keep her cell phone in place when driving. And I was like, well, we can make these larger for tools. And um, so I hustled really hard, raising a lot of grant money, rose about like $160,000 in grant money, got our like like the first one into production, launched it in the aviation industry at Oshkosh. And then from there, ended up launching uh, three new sizes on Kickstarter. Um, from our Kickstarter, we raised $113,000 in a month. And then um, total raised was like, hundred I think $160,000. And then um, from there, went to Shark Tank, which was really cool. Got three sharks, Lori Grenier, Mark Cuban, and Richard Branson. And then from there, um, we got on the cover of Time Magazine and Forbes, I got Forbes 30 under 30, which was pretty crazy. That happened within the same hour that uh, we found <laughs> out that we got those. Uh, <laughs> now, the thing is, I didn't understand the gravity of the Time Magazine thing because they're like, yeah, you're in the top, like, or the, the time, they're doing like Time Inventions of the Year, like top 50 inventions. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then they like email us like on the cover and I was like, holy shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then like the Forbes thing, I, I didn't think I got it because I, the way that they date it is like in a year in advance. So like, like we had the, so if you get like 2020, the, so like 
right now they'll have the celebration of people who won last year. And it'll be like, they'll be like 2020, but they got it in 2019. So when I was like looking at it, I was like, oh, people already got it this year at 2020. So I didn't get it. I just thought like, uh, but I was really looking at the year before. And, yeah. uh, and then I found out I did get it. I was like, oh shit, that's, that's crazy. Um, so yeah, it's been pretty wild. We, we've been on Good Morning America three times now, which the last one was, was insane because um, so the, the Shark Tank community was collectively trying to get like a, a Good Morning America um, like day. So what Good Morning America will do will highlight like small businesses and help them like sell, sell their product. And uh, so we were a part of like a do it yourselfer day. And then the Shark Tank community was like, hey, let's try to get our own day. And I was like, I don't think they're going to give it to us just because like we just had one a month ago. And then the day before they sent us an email was like, hey, um, we have an open spot. Can you go on tomorrow? Which normally it's like we've been planning for the other one like six months in advance. Um, but the thing was, we like already had all of our paperwork done and all of our like phot photography and videos done. So it was like a really quick solution for them. I, I think what happened is someone might have dropped out. And uh, what was crazy is, is we like, when we, so the last month we had five different products. Um, this past one, we only had one product and we almost doubled our sales. Wow. So let's cool. go back to... So let's go back to Shark Tank. Cause I actually watched that one live. Well, not live, but when they, re when they aired it, right. The first time and everything. So yeah. you got to tell me what was it like, the, you know, the night before or the minute before, like you're expected to go on there on camera. Like, is it just, were you like cool, calm, collected this, this young 20 year old up there? Or was it, were you like, Oh my God, I hope I don't screw this up on national television. How did, how did um, that play I, out? I definitely, I definitely peed a little bit. <laughs> uh, it was who, who's I, your favorite shark uh you know i i honestly i like i like mark cuban i i think i like mark cuban a lot um if i had a, if i had to pick one i would i would probably pick him just because well i'm a basketball fan to begin with right so there's a lot of that going on um but i i do i would have to pick mark cuban of all of them okay yeah he's mark's definitely a powerhouse uh, he's he's a really good guy um Interesting, like, fact about Mark. So, what, well, one thing is he is completely terrified of heights. Um, like, like, like he he won't even like if we're at a, I don't know, there's like a balcony on top of a building or something. He won't even like go out to the balcony. Like he'll keep like ten feet from the edge. He doesn't even like get near it. And then um, something that was pretty cool is like I I was talking to him about. So I, I don't know if you've ever heard this, but so Mark is very, um, he uses his voice a lot during basketball games and he gets uh, like fined for, for the, sometimes talking to the refs. So whenever he gets fined, he doubles the, like he matches yeah. that amount and donates it. And I was like, yep. Mark, who do you, like, where do you donate the money? And he goes, I, I, uh, use the money to pay people's medical bills. And I was like, okay, that's, that's pretty, I was like, that's really cool. What, what's the, um, like, what's the nonprofit you give the money to? He goes, I don't, I don't do a nonprofit. And I'm like, well, how do you, like, how do you find the people? Um, he's like, they just email me. So every, when I, all the money that he's donating, he just donates directly to that person. And he has like his own system of like making sure that they're like legitimate and like, getting the, the proper medical bills. So, um, yeah, it's, it is pretty cool. Like the way, like how, how he gives his money and, and he's like very, very smart in that way. But, uh, kind of back so to your question of, um, you know, how was I before? Honestly, like, so two days before we did a practice pitch, you do a practice pitch in front of like the, uh, the cast, the camera guys, the director, yeah. not in front of the sharks. And, I was like so nervous. I, I like completely um, bombed it. Like I, I like froze and my producer had to like yell out the next line for me to like keep going. Um, I was under like <laughs> a lot of stress. And um, yeah, I mean, before I was like 
crying. I was freaking out. Uh, I realized <laughs> I had I struggled with imposter syndrome really bad. And then <laughs> when I when it came time before, I was just kind of like, you know, this is what we came here for. We're either we're either going to get it or we're going to get thrown out, like one of the two. So um, that was kind of the attitude hey, hey, I had. You know, and the cool thing with yours is, I mean, you actually had some big balls there, right? You had you you kind of got a couple other like, hey, well, who else can I get to come in with me, right? And not a lot yeah. of people would do that. A lot of people think would just say, hey, let's let's you know, there's a deal here, let's take it, and that that wasn't the way you did it. So it's really cool to see, you know, you're nervous, but you were actually you had an agenda, you were there. And you weren't afraid to go ask for something more, um, which you see that sometimes backfire when people cut up on the Shark Tank and they start asking for more. Right, right. Uh, all right. So, you know, one of the investors you have um, has actually been in the news lately with Virgin, Virgin Air and Atlantic and everything with the COVID killing the plane industry and tourism and all that. So yeah. do you have much contact with Richard Branson and how, how much contact do you have with these guys after you get done with the Shark Tank show? Is it just kind of all for show and then you never hear from them again? Or are they a mentor that you can go hit up later if you got questions? And how, how does it work afterwards? Yeah, so I'm typically in con like normal situation, probably in contact with a shark or someone from their team um, every other day or maybe every other three days. Um, wow. and it's also, it's also kind of like how, like, they're going to respond as much as you like give out. So like, if I'm giving them updates, if I'm like getting them involved, then they will, you know, they're going to be like replying to that, but they're not going to be like, you know, I'm going to be like to get Mark to email me is I have to email Mark, not the other way around. Not like Mark just like. Hey, Tom, just wanted to check in, see how you're doing. Uh, it doesn't really work that way. Uh, now, what I do is um, right away, I, I would get someone on each person's team that I could just like text. So like, I know they're really busy, but you know, if I got a question about Amazon, I don't need Mark's, I don't need to ask Mark. I need to talk to Mark's Amazon guy. So I, I don't always want to like talk to them directly. I, I want like whoever their expert is. Um, back to like Branson. Yeah, it's been, I've been kind of like just letting him do his thing. Cause obviously he's got a lot on his mind right now. Um, but his, his team is usually very supportive. Um, but yeah, just like just recently, I think it was this year, um, the Virgin team did on Vir Virgin Entrepreneur, like a, another, um, update about, about grip mat. So like that was really cool. And then um, like after that is like when COVID was really starting, starting to hit. So um, yeah, he's been very busy with that. That's been like top of mind. So um, yeah. So let's, let's, let's talk about sales a little bit in COVID. I can tell you on the diesel laptop side, our sales volume, I mean, we're selling $10,000 capital goods. That's our bread and butter tool. And as you can imagine, a lot of people that run repair shops may decide not to buy a $10,000 tool right now. So we've seen a pretty dramatic decline, you know, 30, maybe even 40 percent in sales in, in some cases. Um, how's it been for you guys? Because yours is sold, you know, obviously online, but I know there's tool trucks and tool companies out there. And we've seen some of the tool companies we deal with really kind of pull back and, and customers can't go on tool trucks and can't go into stores. Have you guys seen a, an impact at all? I know you had a great Good Morning America thing that just happened, but what have you seen kind of in the general market the last couple of months? Right. So, um, specifically with the automotive industry, it has been like pretty like flatlined. Um, yeah. you know, something that was very good that we did just before Q4 of 2019 is that we really switched our focus of being direct to consumer. So when we did that, um, it like gave us a lot of like control of, of, of our like revenue streams. So, um, because which was you know in hindsight one of the best decisions that we could have done because we before that we were very dependent on tool trucks on um you know brick and mortar tool stores and uh you know obviously they're they're having a rough time right now so um since we've switched we also like the concept was so we had like a we had an amazing um fourth quarter of like doing the direct to consumer and um, 
we just we just started focusing on that and I had like a list of different categories I wanted to to focus on and um most of them did not work but what but one that really did that worked very well was the in-home defense and um police officer market so the that audience really likes to clean like police officers like to clean their pistols in a grit mat so um, you know, officers are like working overtime, um, like in-home defense is like, is been really up th this time of year. And, um, so now that we've been able to like shift to that market, why our normal markets that we focus on is, is in a, in a low, we've been able to like keep our, our revenue, um, very high. So like the, the, the good morning America or what we say is GMA, GMA was like a, a good blast, but like we were still like doing doing well um with our sales numbers in, in a new market you know very similar story here you know we've quickly figured out people aren't going to buy ten thousand dollar tools but they are going to buy some other stuff so we've had to pivot and switch our sales people around and focus on other products and other categories and we've really had to dive down into our expenses and let's make sure we're not not overspending in certain things so it's great right. to hear other companies doing the same thing i mean Think pressure gets put on us as business owners. We gotta we gotta adjust to the market conditions and, and go forward. But one of the one of the things I've noticed in your situation um, is now you guys are successful. You're all out there, and we have the same problem at Diesel Laptops. Here come the knockoffs, right? Here come the the people trying to copy and replicate what you've done. Um, you want to talk a little bit about kind of how you're how do you deal with that as a business owner, right? You got a great idea, a great business you built, and here comes somebody else trying to replicate and basically steal the ideas and things that you've done at, at Gritmat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, um, for one, it's like, like right from the start, it can be like very frustrating. And it, at first it feels like a dagger to the heart, but like now I'm almost flattered that like someone like, you know, you're doing something right when people are stopping everything that they're doing to copy you. And, and also like yeah. when you have a knockoff, the not when you have a knockoff or if you are being a knockoff you are expressing to the world that you are you are inauthentic and then you're also expressing to the world that you are less than um because like think of gopro have you ever seen a gopro knockoff that charges more than gopro never no you'll I never see never. that yep. the only way that they can do that do it is they like so they are always cheaper and they are always less than and that is like the only way that they could maybe compete. So the thing is, there's cheaper knockoffs to GoPro, and you'll look at them both and be like, "Nah, man, I'll forget the go, forget the knockoff. I'll pay an extra hundred dollars because I know it's GoPro. I know they're authentic. I know you know they're the original." Um, where like, so I mean, you you can sit around and like stress all day about knockoffs, but um, you know the. The, the, they're also like expressing a lack of innovation. They're ex like there's there's such a like a downfall that they're that they're expressing to the universe. Like they're they're also expressing that they can't innovate. They're going to like sit and wait for you to make something new, and then they're going to like oh shoot, while you're having this cutting edge product or advanced advancement in your product or service, um, they're just going to be like constantly scrambling to try to you know do something. To, to copy you again it's not like they're going to be able to like come up with it like i know that a knockoff is not going to come up with the next cutting edge accessory or service so yeah. they're at best just going to sit dormant until you do something and then like sitting dormant you know it, it might just be you know a matter of time until they quit um that's another thing for me is like i i've worked on grip mat for seven years and um i know like like I've almost went bankrupt twice. I've lived on my car, sold my house for, for grip mat. And it's like, <laughs> it's almost like laughable to me of like, like I know, I know they haven't ha like had to go through that for their company and for their product. So therefore I'm just kind of like, bring it on. Like you're probably going to die th over one quarantine, you know? Um, yeah. I, I can guarantee that they don't know the market as well as I do. And they don't know how to like shift as well as I do in the market. So. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So one of the, one of the things that's really impressed me about you is you're just your passion and your drive. 
right? So, I mean, I follow you on LinkedIn. I, I follow you on Facebook. And now I see you on TikTok doing some stuff on there as well. I'm definitely not a TikTok guy. I'm, I'm too old for that, I think. Um, but do you remember, I don't know if you remember, do you remember how you first found diesel laptops when you guys first ran across us and first engaged with us? So I'm like, well, there's, I remember two times. <laughs> I remember there was like a fa uh, mechanic Facebook group that I posted in and someone was like, people kept tagging like you and they're like, Tyler's got to see this. Tyler's got to see this. And then there was a time. I can't remember how it happened. But um, one of like, you guys were at Matt's Mid America Trucking Show. Yeah. And I like, somehow I was like stalking some of your sales guys. And uh, I, think, I think actually I had a buddy who had a, a, truck, a truck with like the hood popped. And he was like, yeah, you can just put your grip mats up here. And then someone was like talking about it. And then I followed him back to your booth. And then I was just like, hey, this is, I was just like, Hey, I'm the grip mat guy. Um, so what do you got here? <laughs> and then, and then, yeah, I was just like walking the floor. And uh, yeah, that's that's like the first two memories I have of of you guys. I guess what was your first memory? Yeah. So yeah, no, that I mean, well, my my guy came back from the trade show and he goes, "Hey, this this guy came up to me. It's this young guy, and he has these mats and." He kind of crashed the show. I don't think he even had a pass to get into the thing. And he just kind of showed up and he <laughs> he goes, what do, you, what do you think about selling these things? And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like this is grit, Matt. I, I seen this on Shark Tank. Yeah. I know exactly who this guy is. But I kind of wanted to prove the point to everyone where things just didn't fall into your lap. This was, this was yeah, people see Shark Tank and Time Magazine and, and all these things. But it's been you hustling behind the scenes for a long time in order to make those things really happen and to get to that point. Right. And going back to your point about the knockoffs, we, we have the same thing too. People try to copy this and copy that on what we do. And I have the same mentality. At first, I was the same way. I was pissed. I'm like, they're copying my idea. They're copying my sales strategy. They're copying my warranty. They're, they're doing all these things. And at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? If they're following me, it means they're not thinking about the next thing. And I can stay two or three steps ahead of these guys and we're going to get way ahead of them. But just going back to man, you you got a you got a ton of a, a ton of energy when it comes to your product line, which is just great to see in the marketplace. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, like, so that, what's that was after Shark Tank, I think, when when I like crashed mats, and yeah, and I, it was still like crashing the show. Don't have a pass, taking flyers and and putting them on top of urinals, um, and then like that's the kind of stuff I know that they're not going to do. Like I've I've been to at like easily over a hundred different trade shows if I'm setting up at the trade show or if I'm like walking the floor and like doing things like putting flyers on top of the urinals. As a CEO, I've probably stocked over 10,000 urinals of like with a flyer, which is, <laughs> you know, that like do that, just doing that other than Shark Tank or Good Morning America has gotten, gotten us more attention and more eyes on our product than anything else. So, um, yeah, it's it just like, I know that I have the what, do whatever it takes mentality and, um, I know it's like very rare. So when it, when it comes to a knockoff, uh, you know, if they really had to do whatever it takes mentality, they would have just done whatever it takes to make their own product. Yeah. So, you know, at the end of the day, what's what's next for Gritmat? Is it is it the three trades and that's where you guys are staying? Is there other products in development? Where are you guys, where do you plan to take the company? How does how does Gritmat make it the next 5, 10, 20 years and, and keep this thing going? Yeah, so um, I'd say like, so we're definitely, long story short, uh, I want to be the leading tool brand online um, because I'm seeing like, we're, we're finding a lot of unique ways of, um, of like marketing to our audience online. Um, what, that's the kind of like long term. The shorter term is um, continuing to like create more products that's going to, I, I want to create like an ecosystem of products that's going to make the mechanic as efficient as possible. So right now it's just the yeah. three trades. Funny you use it. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, you use the term efficient as possible. 
That's the exact, exact terminology we use when we talk about solutions for our customers that are fixing vehicles, right? How do we make you the most efficient as possible? So a little bit of irony there yeah. in the fact we use the same terminology. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, honestly, when we when we went to, Lucas and I went to your guys' like, um, grand opening that you guys had, um, it, lo- it looks like you guys have like moved around since then, but you guys had like, you guys like just hit like 50 people on your team or something like that. It was like, you know, we went from like two to three people to 50 in like, like three years. And you guys had like that ribbon cutting ceremony. I, I, I really admired what you guys had with like, like, I felt like the energy there was like definitely like sense of urgency and like execution. And um, I felt like you guys, um, the way that I've described you seven, several times is that um, you're the Steve Jobs in the diesel world. Um, you're the, <laughs> you're like the, the Steve Jobs of hillbillies, really. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but for real, like I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start wearing like a black turtleneck or something. Yeah, make yeah, it, get make the it really jeans work. on. Um, but but <laughs> yeah. yeah, I see. I see a lot of like you know unique innovations that you guys are doing to to really um, like break down what's happening in the in the diesel world. Um, I guess a question I have for you: How do you feel about? the concept of electric semi trucks coming in. Yeah, so I mean, at the end of the day, we love complexity in vehicles and electric trucks. Yeah, there's no engine in there, but there are still a ton of sensors and motors and other things. And, you know, those things are still going to break and fail. And people, technicians don't have the opportunity to get training and diagnostic tools and repair information to fix those things, which is the whole reason diesel laptops exist. So. For me, whether it's an electric truck, yeah, there's not an engine there, but there's still a battery and a lot of wiring and motors and, and things going on. That's that's great. There's still a place for us there. Electric trucks, I think they're they're definitely they're here. They're not going anywhere. You got Tesla coming out with theirs. Freightliners putting theirs into mass production. I know the Volvo teams are working on stuff. Uh, Cummins is actually getting involved in uh, electric and alternative energy trucks. So they're coming. Um, every report I read is it's going to be a slow adoption. I think the 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 most, you know, one of them, the consensus is that if you look 10 years in the future, what percent of the market will be electric trucks? Everyone kind of thinks it'll still only be about 10%. So they're coming though. And we keep telling all of our customers, man, if you guys are good at changing brakes and working on engines and doing these things, you need to keep your eye to the future because it's it's a fast changing landscape when it comes to commercial trucks. There's billions of investment money that's being put into this market. And I think through COVID, everyone's seen how important trucking is at this point to keep product moving from plants to stores to people. And there's no slowing down that investment money that's coming in. It is just, it is a multi, multi multi-billion dollar, you know, industry every year. And it's not going anywhere anytime soon, but companies are going to have to adapt and change whether they want to or not. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. And Autonomous trucks are usually the other conversation right around that as well. And that stuff I still think is, you know, 10, 15 years out based on what I see today of things that actually work. And there's more that doesn't work than does work with autonomous trucks, but it's coming in the future. So it'll, it'll be there um, as we come down. So, um, so Tom, with all that said, I, I just want to say thank you again for coming to our open house that we yeah. had. Uh, it was a year and a half ago, but you're right. We, we did, we did leave that place and we got another facility. It's about 40,000 square feet. So it's twice the size. Yeah. We're up to about 150 employees late now. So yeah, yeah we're still coronavirus or not. We're 150. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I actually, this sounds insane to do this right now, but there was 14 acres of property around for sale around our building that we bought and I closed on it on Monday. Oh, I saw so, that. So, you know, it, it may seem, yeah, it may seem silly to some people to go drop a bunch of money on property, but, you know, I look at like the five and 10 year view. And at the end of the day, this whole COVID thing is going to be a small speed bump in the the long game and the long plan of this thing. And they're not making any more land anytime soon. And I was running out of space before COVID. Granted, a lot of people work from home now, <laughs> but, but eventually it'll go back to normal and we're going to need the space. So, you know what? I've been doubling down on my business much like you have for the last, you know, uh, we've been around for about five years full time. Um, and it's just, I think a lot of people look at what we do and they see these sales we're making and these sales numbers and they think we're, you know, living the high life and buying private jets and sports cars and all these things, but they don't realize how much money goes right back into the company yeah. to keep reinvesting on it. I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen the same thing too, where it, it, it takes a lot of cash to run a business. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's, it's just kind of like circulating 
where, where when people think like, let's say you had a million dollars in revenue, it's like you took your money, your profit, and then you put it back in and then you did it again and again and again and again. So you might, you know, you could only have like a couple hundred grand and but have like a million dollars in revenue because you've like cycled the money through so many times. But uh, yeah. Yeah. I hear you that. Yeah. So like our, since I've started this, this is a crazy stat that people don't believe me, but it's the truth. We've sold over a hundred million in products since I started this five years ago. And every year I've had to take money out of my company and, and basically take a loan to go pay for my taxes <laughs> every year. So it, it's, it's tight because you're, you're trying to grow your inventory. You're trying to develop new products. You're trying to market your company. Your receivables are growing. And it's, it's really tough to grow your business and not take on debt or take on investors like you did. Yeah. Um, and in your case, you've got some great strategic partners beyond just having the investors. I don't want to bore the audience with like tax talk, but um, <laughs> I guess anyone who, who is listening, like having like, it's very important to understand the basics of taxes and also understand the basics of finances. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of people in the startup community who um, they, they're, they're like afraid of numbers or like they, they don't like math. And I'm like this, you, you have to get really used to this. Um, I almost feel like it's an older person, like doesn't like to use a computer. Like you, like it's not going to way, like you need to learn how to use the computer. You're going to have to learn how to like be okay with finances and like be okay with like figuring out finances, uh, fairly quickly. Um, it's funny cause like the, I, I'm always thinking of like profit margins, like the percentage of like how much we're buying stuff and like selling stuff. And, uh, we had a guy, yeah. a sales guy, actually when Lucas was on our team, he, uh, it's funny cause sometimes we'd be on the phone, I'd be like driving. And he's like, yeah, so we should end up making like this much money. And I'm like, no, do put that into a calculator. It's probably, <laughs> I think we're going to profit about half. And then he, then he'll like do it on a calculator. He's yeah. like, oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, so, well, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's amazing how much just a couple dollars affects gross margin and how that all filters down at the end of the day. It, it just really blows your mind when you're in business. And I think a lot of outsiders don't, don't see that part of it, but you're right. It's a learning experience. I didn't, I didn't want to know anything about taxes or, or c company formations and gross margins, but you know, here we are. And it's, it's part of what we have to do now as business yeah, owners. For sure. All right. So at the anyway, Tom, I just, again, just want to really thank you for coming on the show and everything. Um, what's the, what's the best way for people to find out more about grit Mad or get in touch with you, with you, if they want to want to talk with you or have an idea or, or want to just get engaged. Yeah, with you? So, um, feel free to send me a direct message on my personal, uh, social media, which is Tom two six burden. That's uh Instagram or just find me on Facebook. You can go to our website at www.gritmat.com. That's G-R-Y-P-M-A-T.com. Um, also, Gritmat, Instagram, Facebook. Um, if you want to watch me dance around um, TikTok, still Tom26Burden. Um, yeah, feel free to, to reach out at any time. So I Go ahead. I got to say this to everybody. Tom is one hell of a dancer on TikTok. I, I enjoy the videos. I think he did a Spice Girls yeah. edition not too long ago. So you're obviously enjoying life down there, which is great. So again, for the audience, Tom Burden from Gritmat. Thank you again for being on the show. For anyone else that wants to drop us a comment, talk to us at all about anything, just feel free to email us at vdl at diesellaptops.com. And remember, it's not just diagnostics, it's diagnostics done right. Right.